So we're not just like this, roll back, being like, yeah, ugh. oh, this is great. Ugh. No, that's not the point. The point is to still be in this positive position here, and I'm from here, and when I actually sit back into my heels, my toes still grip on the ground, then I'm pulling up and I'm back down. What is up, it's your boy John Ashreve, I have BB Pro, Mr. Telic it is. Welcome back to the episode of Train With Me. Today we're gonna go over bent over rows and pendulum rows. I think it's one of those exercises that a lot of us are not hitting the mark. We really wanna hit the mark before we hit our, the mark on our back. <laughs> Without further ado, guys, keep your eyes glued to the screen, your ears glued to the speakers, and let's learn some shit. Pay close attention, I'm gonna give you guys some golden cues when it comes to just setting up. Remember, the setup is gonna give you success for the entire lift. So the setup is extremely important. We wanna make sure we have a good base so we can isolate the muscle that we're trying to target. So when you look at, when it comes to a bent over row, you need to literally, I'm just gonna fast forward to what you should look like. You should be able to sustain yourself in this position. This should be easy for you to do right now. Like how I am right now is I am balanced right now. I can, I can do a lot of things. I can read a book, I can text message. I can right now, just trying to give you guys an idea of like, if you can't get in this position comfortably, then you shouldn't be doing a bent over row to begin with. I'm just letting you guys know. So that, right now I want you to get off of your, uh, your couch. Maybe not on your couch, don't be a damn, hope you're not damn, shit, you better not be on damn couch. Get off of your computer chairs, or at your desk or your stand-up desk or something. And I want you to do this with me right now. I want you to go, boom. I want you to just do this. And I want you to just hang out here for a minute and breathe and talk. And it's gotta look like this, right? The back's gotta be flat. And you gotta be, you know, if you can't do this, this video, you need to go back to some other videos we're doing with a lot of chest supported movements. Anything that supports you here, because this video is gonna teach you guys how to support yourself without having to use chest. And if you can't do this, you should be doing this regardless, right? So what am I doing? I'm basically doing a hinge, I'm hinging. I'm doing exactly what my body's intended to do in terms of what my glutes, hamstrings, quads, feet, erectors, core are built for me to do. So we're talking about like hinging, and let's just say like, where should my feet be? Where should my feet be? And I've done this little drill before too, and you guys can apply it to your deadlifts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in a circle, right? We're gonna turn a circle, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious, do one more circle, just make it fun. Okay, cool, now we're dizzy. We're just gonna jump as high as we can and then land. We're just gonna jump up, high as we can, and we're gonna land. Okay, cool. There's where my feet naturally landed. I didn't do anything to manipulate that. You can do the same thing, and that's kind of about the, about the width your feet should be in terms of like your hips and your shoulders. Because naturally when you jump, you naturally hinge. When you jump in the air, no one, you're not thinking, sucking the stomach and, and, and you're not thinking anything. You just kind of just jump in the air, you just jump. Everybody here knows how to jump. So you basically slow that part down. It's the beginning part of that jump. Now here's a, a super dope cue for you guys to understand. And everybody's experienced this before. Pretend you gotta go to the washroom in a public washroom. You gotta go. It's number two. It sucks, but you just gotta go. Nowhere else to go. It's a public bathroom is nasty. You've already done all the, you know, the, the, the nest and stuff on the paper. Hopefully they got the, the thing in there. Anyway, just pull it out and you could, you put like six of them on because it's gross. And then you, and you do one of these things. You do the, right? Everybody's done it. Everybody has done this in a public bathroom. Don't tell me you have not done this in a public bathroom trying to just like not sit on the toilet. You're just like, uh, and you got the best grab, you got the best base. You're not even like huffing or puffing. You naturally are just like, I'm not touching that nasty ass toilet. Shit. And you're like this, and you can hold it. Maybe a little brace yourself here and there. You might be touching the, the wall, maybe, I don't know, maybe not, but you're this. It's basically what you're doing. A hinge is basically pretending that you're, you're sitting on a public gross ass bathroom. You're just do one of these. There you go. Now while we do that, what are we doing? Well, hips are going back. While we're doing that, we want to engage our core. That's the biggest part of this thing. Once we're back like this, and we're down that position, Engaging our core, like pretending like someone, one of your buddies is gonna come by and just uppercut you in the stomach. He's, you got one of those, one of those dick friends who are just like always playing jokes and shit. And he's gonna come over and just sucker punch you in the stomach for some reason while you're doing a hinge. I don't know. So you're just gonna be like, oh, where's that guy gonna come hit me in the stomach? So you're basically gonna keep that tense while you're in this position. That is how I can sit here all day long and not feel my back because I have back issues in the first place. If I don't engage my core, this looks like this. 
and then becomes maybe like this. And then you're doing rows like this, or I don't, you, you, you twerking or you're doing something. I don't know what you, you, but you're not doing this. And that's what we want to get at. So remember, public bathroom, engaging core, right? And you, then from here, you want to feel your toes and your heels right in the grip into the floor. That's going to keep you base. Toes, heels. You can feel that coming up your feet, in your calves, in your glutes and hamstrings are tight, your butt's tight, and your core's tight. And you can sit here all day and do a row. Let's apply this to an actual exercise. Come on. When you're training, you should just feel like you're chilling. Actually, the groove of this awesome bar here, the rackable easy bar from Bells of Steel made it actually not that uncomfortable sitting on it. What makes it even more comfortable is actually the grips. It's perfect. Okay, so how do we apply this to our first exercise? So doing bent over rows, I suggest, I literally, you know, full disclosure, I was thinking about doing it from the ground. I'm like, wait a minute, doing it from the floor is way harder because like not everybody's mobile enough to get to the floor, right? So we're gonna bring it all the way back to the beginner stage. So if you guys are doing it from the floor and you're like, again, you can't even sustain holding yourself up without any weight, you should be doing it from the rack, if anything at all. So all we're gonna do is, now, just to get past grip, Again, guys, when we're doing supinated and then externally rotating out our shoulders here, our tears major minor help with that movement. So you're gonna feel a little bit more of that here when you're rowing, right? So you're still gonna hit the same muscles. You're just gonna pull into your tears major a little more from doing this, sorry, minor, right? And then if you did just pronated grip, same thing. We're just, again, trying to pull the elbows back. Now, starting the position, what we want to do is getting the weight. I'm gonna start in a supinated position. Right, you can do with the easy bar or straight bar, depending on how mobile your wrists are. Anyway, so we're gonna stand this thing up, right? And then we're gonna walk out a little bit. From here, I'm going to, remember at the beginning, when we talked about going to the washroom in the dirty public bathroom? I got some nightmares in those things, but ugh. Anyway, same thing, but this time we're gonna, we're gonna protract a bit. We're gonna push the lats down a little bit. We're gonna let them relax. We're gonna let the weight of the bar naturally pull your shoulders down, but you still want your shoulders back and away from your ears so we're nice and tight, right in our, under our armpits. Another cue for you. Pretend someone's trying to tickle your armpits. You're kind of like, Ugh, don't do that, right? Now from here, we're gonna pretend we're in a public bathroom. We're gonna do the whole hinge thing again, like, ooh, gross. There's a nasty toilet behind me. I'm not sitting on that, uh-uh. And then while we are engaging our core, we're able to keep our back flat in the weight here, and then from here, we're rowing ourselves in. Now, when I do row, before I start rowing, I want you to understand that when you're doing this movement, when you're pulling and you're looking at the floor and you're pulling, I want you to think of the same idea as if you were doing a seated row. You're almost like pulling yourself into the row. Do the same thing, but pull it through your legs. You should feel the row as soon as you start pulling. You should feel it literally in your glutes. And I'll kind of give you guys an idea when I start doing the row. You'll see my body sway naturally because I'm literally thinking about my legs my glutes, hands, and core to help this row and isolate it. So we're gonna come off again, walk up. Now again, the start of this movement is basically a Romanian deadlift, right? Bam, we just did three movements in one exercise, in one video, right? Romanian deadlift back. So basically an RDL is sitting in a gross public bathroom, right? We're doing RDL down. Lats are engaged, core's engaged from here, and then we're pulling into our, right, into our stomach. Elbows are shooting back, scaps are tracting, so scaps, elbows, in. And I'm able to hold that weight here because my center of mass is here and onto where my glutes are. And through and straight down and pulling again. And I'm creating leverage by hinging back my butt a little more to tighten my core, to tighten my glutes and my hamstrings more to give me more leverage. When I'm pulling, instead of trying to be on my toes and doing this, this makes no sense. So when we're doing this, make sure we're always thinking about shooting our butt back. We don't want to sit on that nasty toilet. We're always shifting our butt back while we're pulling. Shifting the butt back, pull. Shifting butt back, pull, right? And we're, and we're sustaining this posture. We're not doing this. And we're not doing this either. I see this way too many times, it's terrible. I hate it. We're here to here and we're here and I'm sustaining a nice proper shin angle. They're staying firm. They're not going forward over my knees. They're almost like pushing into the floor when I'm pulling, right? So the same rule would apply when it comes to doing dumbbell rows too. So like literally you can use sitting in a public bathroom 
Q for RDLs. It's literally the exact same thing. So you're having a hard time figuring out how to shift your butt backwards and maintain balance. Just literally think about sitting in a gross public bathroom. Don't tell me I have it. Same thing. I'm gonna pretend that I have already picked these off of the rack. I'm gonna start from here. Same thing as starting from the rack. And again, shoulders back, away from the ears, and then letting the weight naturally pull myself down. I can feel my lats getting tight, and I'm doing the same thing again. Grip my toes into the floor, making sure I can feel everything from the ground up. And then, again, butt's gonna go back like I'm sitting in a gross bathroom. And then letting my weight shift forward a little bit into my hands. My lats are still engaged. And then I'm gonna pull into the floor. You see my weight shifting into my butt. Now it doesn't go forward like this. It goes from here and straight, reaches back a bit and pull and pull. And to be able to do this, I have to maintain an engaged core the entire time. Otherwise, I'm gonna feel all this in my lower back here or I'll just get tired and start doing this. And this is what most people look like when they're doing this. And this is gross, so don't do this. Having said that, my favorite way to do this movement would be being in a Smith machine because we can control our environment that much more and not really worry about too much about stabilization in terms of like balancing ourselves in free ways. So let's try this on the Smith machine. If I'm gonna do a bent over row and I have a Smith machine, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna use a Smith machine. Now, that's my preference. Whatever you wanna use that you can connect with, again, if you can make sure, if you can hold yourself like this, you can do whatever you want, I don't really care. Do what works for you, do what you enjoy. That's the biggest takeaway from this. Do what you enjoy. This is what I like doing. Why I like doing it is because I don't have to worry too much about where this thing is going. All I have to do is make sure I position myself to where I should be to make sure this thing's gonna go up exactly where it's gonna go. You're just telling me exactly where this is gonna go. It's gonna go here to here and that's it. So I don't, I don't gotta be like, yo man, where's, where you put my body with this thing here? Make sure you don't go left to right and shit. It's gonna go up and down, right? So from here, it's the same thing. I'm gonna unrack it just like I did in the rack, because that's what you do in the rack when you unrack things. If I put myself in the same position I was before, pretending I'm, pretending I'm in a public bathroom again, yet again, so we're all gonna have some, some nightmares about public bathrooms after this video. But if I just do this and sit myself down here, look at that. I'm gonna basically gonna be doing exactly what I'm intended to do just by setting up like that. So if you're, if you're wondering how to set up in a synth machine, like how far back should I be? Should I be this way? Should I be this way? Just walk straight up to it like you're doing a deadlift. You hinge your butt back like you're doing before. I guarantee if I just do this. Oh man, look at that. Yeah. Right? And then the cool thing about that is it's gonna naturally make you move the way you should because when we're going into that position, we're basically doing a RDL, right? Toes gripped on the floor, they're tight. Naturally letting this pull me down on the floor. So my lats are activated. The shoulders are depressed, right? <laughs> depressed. And then we're back from here and then we're rowing. You can have your grip a little wider if you want and you can go underhand grip if you want. There's where we wanna be. Now, to take it a step further, pendulum row, you can do the same machine. Bam, look at that, we just finished. We did a pendulum row. From here, the same idea. When we're doing this, when I'm pulling from here, I'm using my glutes to help me with the movement. So we're not just like this, roll back, being like, yeah, ugh, oh, this is great, ugh. No, that's not the point. The point is to still be in this positive position here, and I'm from here, and when I actually sit back into my heels, my toes still gripping the ground, then I'm pulling up and I'm back down. So when I'm pulling this, the leverage is still coming from my glutes as well too, and I'm pulling. So it's up and down, pull, pull. Pull, right? I'm in this positive position the entire time. So same idea when it comes to doing the barbell. Do the barbell, do the barbell. <laughs> same thing, we're gonna walk up to it like we're doing a deadlift, sitting down that position from here. And then again, I'm engaged from the toes, heel, calves, hamstrings, glutes, lats engaged, pull. And it's okay to come up a slight bit. We don't wanna be like this. It's just a tiny bit to get a nice positive back from here. Right? And it's just promoting a little bit more of your rear delts and your scaps and your traps activating more and retracting. It's the biggest add on from that actual movement. So that is it. Now remember, if you can't sustain that posture 
from the beginning of the video and throughout the entire video, I recommend going back and watching my videos on a lot of the chest supported rows, like this one here, or even this one here. Remember guys, mobility is gonna be a huge factor in you being able to do a lot of these, a lot of these more advanced movements. Movements that are a little more compound. So again, work on your mobility. If you try any of these cues out, make sure you guys let me know in the comment section below. And I hope you guys liked that video. So if you did, make sure you guys hit that like, subscribe, and share button. You know, I'm gonna come with a like it is transparent, vulnerable truth, and for coaching, johnrashid.com. Anyway, guys, if you want to know more about my coaching, guys, book yourself a 15 and 30 minute consult. At the end of the consult, I'd duck it off any package that you pick. Anyway, guys, hit the description below for those discount codes and promo codes help save your life or change your life for the better. Like join the time for 10% off bluestarnutraceuticals.com. Anyway guys, make sure you guys add me on Instagram and TikTok guys, send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips, and I'll repost it for you because you know how it is. Iron Shepherd's Iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>